Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yuzul, the game is World of Warships, and as you sit comfortably, consider, if you will, the plight of the Shimakaze. Often seen as the worst of the Tier 10 destroyers, these small boats lead a harsh and unforgiving existence. Riding into the teeth of the enemy as scouts and cappers, they must brave enemy ships seeking only to violate their hulls with gunfire, they must avoid the hostile eyes of enemy aircraft that will mockingly laugh at their flak as they rain bombs and torpedoes, and they must stay out of the way of radar and sonar systems that will leave them with nowhere to hide from the merciless onslaught. Some of these underage boats survive, most do not. Even while doing their best against the harsh environment and the enemy, their main weapon, the oxygen torpedo, must contend with a poor stealth, advanced sensors, competent players who know what the A and D keys actually do, and the ever-present lurking menace of Torpedo Beat. For a Shimakaze, life is harsh, brutal, and often all too short. Sometimes, however, things go a little bit differently for the Shimakaze. This match came in from Bloody Soul Reaper, and without spoiling anything straight off, let's just say that the damage total he ran up was enough to make me sit up and pay attention. It has to be observed that the matchmaking's been pretty kind to him on this one. There's no aircraft carriers in the game, and the only ships he seriously needs to worry about are the Kabarosk, the gunboat destroyer on the enemy team, he needs to be a little bit cautious around the other destroyers, a Shimakaze is a mirror match, a Yugobo can potentially outgun a Shimakaze in the right config, and oddly enough the tier 8 cruiser, the Edinburgh, because, well, one, it has the British AP round with those very fast fuses, and two, it can actually swap out its smoke for a radar consumable. Same one as Belfast, pretty much, 8.5km range. Not a common modification, it's something you tend to see in division play, and occasionally in team battles, but you do occasionally see it in randoms, I've tried it a few times myself, and, well, let's just say that while I did occasionally give a few destroyers a rather nasty surprise, not having the smoke turned out ultimately to be more of a problem than having to close up to hydro range. However, we are in domination mode, this is land of fire, and Soul Reaper is doing the standard tactic, getting forwards, getting a cat point, getting those sweet, sweet victory points rolling in. Shimakaze, of course, is very well suited to this, top speed of 39.1 knots out of the box, and that's before you plug in engine boost or load Sierra Mike. The only downside with this kind of speed is that it's very easy to leave your heavy support behind, and the Bismarcks are now 12 kilometers behind him. Uh, so slow. And there's the Khabarovsk, which isn't a problem immediately, but he has sent up a flare saying Japanese destroyer over here, because nobody else could get to the control point in time. And this is where Lady Luck starts playing games with the enemy team. Boombap has put torpedoes into the water, he's emptied his tubes. Sailing Robin's actually done a 180, but he's under fire, and he's going to do what most Russian destroyer captains do under pressure. He's going to smoke up and like most destroyer captains, he's going to be rocking backwards and forwards inside that smoke. Normally it's a smart plan, it lets you keep steerage way on the destroyer, and if anyone is firing at your tracers, they are probably going to miss. Normally it's a smart plan. On this occasion, however, it's going to backfire because in about two seconds, boom, he just sailed right into a torpedo, and I don't know whether he had to, had to control a fire from those blind HE shells, or he was just slow on the button, but he flooded out, so farewell the Sailing Robin and the Khabarovsk, we hardly knew ye. Meanwhile, over there, Martin Rymus in the Hipper is about to have a nasty wake-up call. He's turning port, and that was entirely the wrong thing to do. He realises his mistake, slams on the brakes, slams over the rudder, and only eats one torpedo for his error. Does flood him out, however, and he has had to blow his damage control to contain that flooding. So if he eats anything else in the next oh, minute or so, he's going to have some pretty serious problems. 
And Boom Bap realises that, also realises that he's about to run into the control point today and start blocking that. So more torpedoes in the water towards Martin Rimus, who at this point is picking up some speed and probably desperately trying to remember where he left the controls to the stereo. Meanwhile, the rest of the enemy battle line is showing up and we've got a clutch of ships coming towards A. The Edinburgh has put some speculative torpedoes into the water, trying to avenge the Kubarosk. Easy torpedo beat from Boom Bap and Sol Reaper. Martin Rimus has found the controls to his stereo. He manages to evade the torpedoes from Boom Bap. And right behind him is View Matalo in the Bismarck. Now, Bismarck's an odd little ship if you're a destroyer. You do not want to unmask within 10 kilometers of her because, well, secondaries and pain, death, torment, etc., etc. However, Bismarck's also a big ship. She's about the same size as Iowa, and she doesn't answer her helm all that well. So, normally, Bismarck drivers, if they suspect there's a destroyer in the area, are constantly jinking, turning, and changing their speed. View Matalot, however, despite the fact that Martin Rimus ahead of him just had a nasty run in with torpedoes, is not doing this. And, well, um, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, and good night. That's the end of him. Now, there's a second Bismarck coming in under Snoopid. Okay, there's only one Salvo coming towards him, but, well, if the enemy were paying attention, they saw there were five torpedoes in both of those salvos, if they were counting. So they know that there is also a Shimakaze lurking, as well as the Yugamo. Do we think Snoopid's going to remember where his rudder is? Actually, yes, he does remember, but it's a little on the late side. However, he does manage to torpedo beat enough that he only eats one fish, gets flooded, and has to blow his damage control to contain that. Meanwhile, Soul Reaper has spotted his next victims, a Currywurst and a Rune sailing in close formation and about to pass behind an island. Oh, thank you. Flick up the torpedo direction computer and you can see the predictor at the moment is saying, replay weirdness notwithstanding, that he hasn't got the shot. Gentle tiptoe down, tubes two and three are about to come back. Now, he's going to lose line of sight very, very briefly while he sets up this shot. He could guesstimate, and I think if this blind spot had carried on a second longer, he would have done. But luckily, the curry Versed opens fire, gets spotted again, and that gives Sol Reaper all the info he needs to put launchers two and three in the water. Ten torpedoes on the way, time to motor out and disappear. Good rule for Shimakaze captains, good rule for Japanese destroyer captains in any scenario, never hit the same target the same way twice. They will be on alert and you will fail the second time. It makes you predictable and then it makes you dead. And speaking of predictable and dead, the allied Udaloi has just beaten the enemy Shimakaze to death. That's one hit, probably the rune, one, two, three hits. Those will have been five, sorry, four hits, five in total. My guess would be that the Rune ate one and the Currywurst ate four, because nobody actually sank from that, and six and a half minutes in, he's run up 190,000 damage. And he's not done yet. The enemy push has gotten itself into A, and, well, at this point, Soul Reaper is a little bit overexposed, so he's looped back and he's trying to set up again. He's not going to get another shot from this location anyway. Curryverst and Rune are both out of the danger zone, temporarily, and, well, you can see from the damage he's done that, yeah, I would say the Curryverst ate three, possibly four, the Rune ate one, possibly two. My suspicion, I think, is three into Curry and two into Rune, actually, looking at the amounts of health they've got left. However, all of that is academic, because right now he's closing in on the Edinburgh to the front, Martin Arimus in the hipper, and yep, it is the Daisenkan Yamato. So, who's he going to go for? Who's the first victim? I mean, broadside Yamato? Oh yes, please. So, let's see. On the other hand, that Edinburgh is stopping, and he's smoking up. Right, dump torps into the smoke. Empty the launchers, because if this pays off and nobody changes their course, this is going to be glorious. 
Remember I said that smart cruiser captains, and you typically include most veteran British cruiser drivers among them, tend to know to rock backwards and forwards in smoke, in particular the British cruisers, which tend to be a little on the large side and have relatively small amounts of smoke to work in. You would think. Normally. Occasionally. However, Sol Reaper had pretty much saturated those torpedoes, so that's three hits into an Edinburgh and a couple more to rearrange the wreckage, and oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, the hotel doesn't manoeuvre that well either. One, two, three, four. 279,000 damage, and the flooding is ticking, so... No, it stopped. So, Yamato has got the damage control out as well. 19 torpedo hits so far in a Shimakaze. This is how you run up epic damage, ladies and gentlemen. The enemy are slowly capturing A back, but at this point, territory control... <laughs> it almost doesn't matter anymore. The Allies are two points up, they've wiped out the right flank, and then Sol Reaper makes his first serious mistake of the engagement. Gets a bit too close to the Hipper, catches a salvo of high explosive, which strips about 5,000 health off him, and yeah, he has just blown his position. And that's how bad it can get. You just make one mistake, and now he's spotted again. Priority target is saying two, three enemies locked on, but the plane circles out of range. Oh no, oh no. Hotel, Hotel Chan, you have really got to learn. A little bit of blind high X from the Mogami, but hits the water. And Soul Reaper is definitely eyeing up that Yamato, who appears to have completely forgotten what the rudder is for. Not to worry. One salvo down the TDC bearing. And yeah, Hotel appears... No. I'm not seeing any rudder movement off that Yamato at all. So, Sol Reaper, clearly assuming that at least something of that is going to put the Yamato down, just toddles away to find another victim with his second and third launchers. Meanwhile, Hexus has run up a devastating strike himself, and the enemy are rapidly running out of ships. They're also rapidly running out of hotels, because in a couple of seconds... Boom. 21 hits, 295,000 damage, and that's actually pretty much what he's going to run up in the course of this engagement. The Curryverse and the Rune have cleared the corner, they've got up to point A, and fortunately there's actually nobody else left. Well, okay, that's a lie. There is this rather worried-looking Bismarck, who it must be noted did learn his lesson. Unfortunately, he's now in a guns duel with another Bismarck, so that's not going to end well. And Sol Reaper decides that he's going to have himself some fun. Gets a bit too close to this legacy spotter plane. I think that came off the Mogami. And starts firing his guns, thinking that, hey, he's spotted anyway. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why you do not unmask within 10 kilometers of a high-tier German battleship. Look at the secondaries coming off that curry -verst. And he's getting hits as well. That's another 3,000 health that Soul Reaper has lost in a few seconds. That's another clip. I think he's had to control one fire already. He has managed to put the Currywurst on fire, but the Rune is adding main battery high explosive in as well. There comes the armor piercing from the Currywurst's main batteries, and of course, because Curry knows where he is, he knows where the torpedoes will be coming from. So, for the first time in the engagement, right at the end, pretty much, a German battleship manages to torpedo beat. And yeah, 305,000 damage, give or take. That, <laughs> you don't see numbers like that in the game very often. It is perhaps unsurprising that Sol Reaper came top of the game with 2,809 base XP. After a rampage like that, what else did you expect? The damage numbers are a bit more revealing. 22 main battery hits, 21 torpedo hits. Main battery hit ratio was just over 66%. He scored 22 hits off 34 shots fired. 
Torpedo hit percentage was just over 35%. Bear in mind, if you will, that those hit percentages are relatively high. A typical main battery hit on the Shimikaze runs at about 45%. Torpedoes run considerably lower. Not least because there are so many ways to spot those torpedoes even earlier than normal. And most people at brackets 8, 9, 10 know how to torpedo beat. At least most of them do. The other point is that having umdenard all the way through the video, I'm going to come down as saying that the Kerfurst 8.4 and the Rune 8.1, looking at those damage numbers. Soul Reaper was using the 93 Mod 3s with Torpedo Acceleration. Those do 23,000 and change damage on the baseline. Of course, you have reduction from the Torpedo Belt and Damage Control mods. So if Curryverse 8.4 for 110,000 reduced down to 75,000 off the armor belt and the damage control, that leaves the room to eat one, 23,000 base dropping to 19,000. The numbers do at least line up that way. It's still quite possible, of course, that the Rune 8.2 and somehow had a damage saturation mechanic save it from being pretty much blown out of the water, and the Curryverse took three very unlucky hits into its bow and stern outside the torpedo belt. We'll never know, short of somebody coming onto the channel, fessing up and showing exactly what they saw happened. One last thing I want to bring up before I finish this video is a little bit of an invitation for everybody. This Saturday, February the 18th, 2017, sees the second Warships Community Contributor Battle. Unlike the first one, Server Pride is not going to be at stake. Instead, the teams will be mixed between the European and American community contributors, and the intent is three hours of complete and total mayhem, and probably a great many laughs for everybody watching. Among the rounds we have planned is 12v12 Shimikaze with torpedoes only, secondary only Bismarcks, Z52s, Fasos, Belfasts, Smoke for Days, and if we somehow haven't blown up the server by the time all of that is done, the final round is intended to be a 12v12 Hakuryu match. They'll be fishing planes out of the server for days after that one. The lineup reads like a who's who of the contributors. Mighty Jingles, Isle Grey, Erun, I Chase, Not Sir, many others. And in what I can only assume is a horrible clerical mishap, they've invited me along as well. I will be taking part. I will be spending most of those three hours trying not to act like a starstruck kuhai and desperately remembering how to actually play the game. Hopefully I won't embarrass myself too badly, but if I do, I hope you'll be all along at twitch.tv forward slash wargaming to point and laugh. If I don't see you there, I'll see you next time. Farewell.